Was the Tunguska event uh, one of the final blows to the great empire of Tartaria? The word gets tossed around a lot in old world research, and a lot of people scratch their heads as to what we mean. Um, we have an area of the world, as you can see from this map from the 1600s, that went under the name of Tartaria, but it has also been used to describe old, the old world, no matter where we look. And in this video we're going to be looking at um, what remains of the area we now call Russia. And not long after the Tunguska event we have the uh, dramatic um, finishing off, the Russian Revolution and the finishing off of the Romanov, the 300 year Romanov dynasty. Here we're looking at Tsar Nicholas and we're looking at his cousin, King George V. Um, both of them descendants of Queen Victoria, who we've covered a lot on this channel. Here again, Tsar Nicholas. Him and his wife, apparently, blood related to Queen Victoria, we are told. It's a very curious tale, everything that went down uh, in the Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, the Soviets' rise to power, the ending of the Romanov dynasty, and uh, it makes me wonder if it's a bit of a Hegelian dialectic by these uh, powers that should not be making it appear that the ending of the monarchy is the beginning of the uh, of a new age for for the people let's say and even here we have uh, these are all blood relatives of Queen Victoria and we have Wilhelm the people that fought against each other in World War one blood relatives the ones in charge so make of that what you will to me it feels like a uh, an elimination of the old world and then you have the rise of the uh, soviet bloc and the communists in in uh, russia and what i think they put basically put a wall up in between two sides of the world and went on erasing the past is what it looks like to me so in this video we're going to be taking a look at some of old world russia And yes, I believe this is just the tip of what rem remains from this area of the world. Uh, we begin in Irkutsk. Irkutsk, you can see right here, not far from Lake Baikal. And as we roll through many of these old postcards, pre-Soviet era postcards, we see the same, same things we see in North America and many of my other videos. You see the horse and buggy culture in the streets. You see all the curbs, everything all built out, and you will see, see the cobble roads and the, uh, the electric streetcars as well. And you see very familiar looking architecture, but there is a slight difference in the styling. And that happens uh, the realm, realm over. Um, every region seeming to have uh, old world structures with a little bit of their own flair. But nonetheless, we are seeing um, the what we call tech, what we have termed tech in this field of research. And really magnificent looking structures. And well, so many of these now attributed to the uh, Orthodox faith, the Christian Orthodox faith. But really, really amazing looking structures. Moving on to Kaliningrad. And we're coming all the way across here. Interesting because it is uh, it's this little um, portion of land here, of modern day Russia ending here, but the Soviet bloc would have come right in through here. And I think we forget with the rewriting of all the maps in World War II, what used to exist, even according to the histories we've been told, the uh, Austro-Hungarian empires and the Prussian empire, this would have been a part of that region. Um, you have the streetcars here in full effect at an early time period. It's interesting too, the streetcars 
um, history telling us that uh, they originated in the States uh, and spread out to some of the major cities in Europe and things like that. But as you'll see, this uh, mode of transportation was widespread across the realm at a very early time period. And what I suggest was a part of the uh, old world infrastructure. And spectacular architecture, of course, very familiar looking in many ways. I haven't covered a lot of places overseas. A lot of the content on my channel has focused on North America, but I'm going to do make more of an effort to branch out and give you a look across the realm of what I'm seeing. Here's a modern day look of that same structure. But remember the whole realm supposedly undergoing this uh, industrial revolution um, at that time period, so no real solid explanation for what existed previous to the Industrial Revolution except for a bit of hard work and uh, hand skills, I suppose you could say. Um, what I what I believe is being uh, covered up. A true, a true past of ours that what I believe is being covered up and uh, the Industrial Revolution and the timeline therein is, uh, is a very weak explanation for how we have progressed so quickly and what I think is actually we have been regressed and many of our technologies have been um, ad adapted to this new world disorder. Here we have a concert house. Previous name, Konigsberg. Beautiful architecture, really. And here you can see the brick streets and you can see the tram lines in here in the streets but uh, magnificent and again we have to we're expected to believe that all this was just done in the past with uh, a little bit of hard work and uh, old old timey skill and horse and wagon a magnificent looking statue very lifelike looking statue on to Kazan now and as we zoom out, we can see Kazan here, um, somewhat centrally located. I'm hard to say central. This is a very, very large landmass. Of course, distorted with the uh, with the shape we were given, but nonetheless, Kazan right here, not far from Moscow, I suppose. And I think what's interesting with the Cold War and the modern day uh, politics, the demonization of Russia, um, and, and why why we need to have this place demonized. Um, and, and I'm sure the uh, reverse would have been the same, especially during the Cold War. And uh, that, I think, is again a Hegelian dialectic. I think the same forces controlling both sides and uh, pitting people off against each other. Again, we have the streetcar in Kazan here, very early time period. Amazing looking, uh, very uh, European looking architecture here at the dome. Of course, we have uh, what's well, considered the Orthodox cross, and, and many people have uh, done research into the shapes um, being harnessers of the ether or energy, the shapes that we now call religious symbols, following along those lines, still in uh, Kazan. And so we are seeing here basically a poverty-stricken people um, that confused looking people with architecture in the background that really is uh, quite mind-blowing, really. And much of it has has been passed down through time, but I would suggest that much of this was destroyed as well. The Soviet uh, architecture being known for its brutalism, much much like the West, to be honest with you. Opposames, I think we're dealing with in many ways. There again, the streetcar at a very early time period. And now this may be in St. Petersburg, so I may have been confused, the Cathedral of Kassan, which we'll be taking a look at as we roll forward. So I showed you this one earlier. So apologies, again it's very difficult to get the geography right everywhere, looking at all these places all the time. I do my best. This is a multi-faith, I believe, uh, and you can see all the symbols up here. I just mentioned all the different symbols. So really on display, I think, here is uh, 
the harnessing of the uh, of the ether and what may have been look at this shape here what, what religion is that anyone know hmm. very 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 ornate amazing amazing even in black and whites you can you get a real sense especially in the black and white sometimes the sense of uh, how over the top these things are and we're looking at these street scenes these dirty old street scenes with these structures in behind Let's zoom in a little bit. What are these gentlemen up to? Again, that same look that we see again too in photos in the uh, from the Western world. These uh, stairs, blank stairs into the camera, multi-storied, elaborate structures in the background. The um, resetting of a realm. Again, I'm giving you that depiction. Magnificent structure. On to Novosibirsk, and we're heading east again, Novosibirsk, quite a ways away, again. There's Irkutsk, Novosibirsk, Kazan. A lot of geography to cover here. And you can see you know, the roads here looking like they're digging their way out of something, and that these structures were, uh, were already there. On to Omsk. Here you can see Omsk. And this is really was a geography lesson for me, learning the the cities within Russia, beyond St. Petersburg and Moscow. Um, I do have Russian blood. My great-grandfather fled the Bolshevik Revolution in uh, in Russia in, uh, in the 19-teens. Perhaps that's why I make such a firm stand against... Um, everything that the Bolsheviks stood for. I don't know how you can't really, after you see the results of their actions. You know, history doesn't really get too deep into that. We focus on uh, Mr. Adolf and his crew, but we don't focus on uh, the whole Soviet thing as much. Hmm. Uh, very dirty, muddy looking roads again. And then you have these structures as well so um, we we have trouble believing in uh, this field of research that these structures were built by these people we think in fact that these these were there and this place was um, dug out post cataclysm and you know, history is even telling us that the uh, Tunguski event Tunguska event um, is it indicating that there was a cataclysm in the not too distant past in this region? And of course, we know in the much of the Western narrative the fires and the earthquakes and the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the, all the rest of it the civil war, the wars all of these, I think, are part of a coordinated reset. Very interesting place, Omsk, especially this one. It jumps out at me. Now, initially I would have thought these were made up structures, but I have seen other, and I apologize I wasn't able to find the visuals for you, I have seen others with these structures in the background. And we will see something similar as well in St. Petersburg coming off of a fountain. But we're still in Omsk right now. Again, look what we have going on on the streets here. Does, does it look, does it, is it plausible that this structure here was built by these people? This entire um, city, with its domes and multi-storied structures and elaborate ornamentation, these people are just sc barely scratching a living. Moving on to Saratov, and we move in a little bit. We can see Saratov here on this river, the Volga River. The structure looking very ominous and out of place. Um, almost looking what we might have deemed uh, futuristic. It does still stand, though. And you can see the statues on there. A little bit less ominous in the modern day, I suppose. And no shortage of tech in Saratov. I did feature uh, postcards from Russia in my 
uh, Where Are the Wires Old um, Old World Tech video. Again, they have the street scenes, the street cars. This is all part of an infrastructure that's been here quite some time. Not an infrastructure that came on strong at the end of the 1800s. Doesn't look that way to me. And then, of course, the, uh, the folks with the hats. The resistance to the sun. Saratov. These things are actually something I zoned in on that video I just mentioned. Very interesting. You can tell that none of this is new. Uh, this is all looking like it's been a part of, again, part of this area for quite some time. This is a colorized from a photograph. What do you think? Almost looks shell-shocked, these people. Wondering where they are, where they're, where they're from, and where they're, where they're going, where they've been placed. I think our dis, uh, so many people have been displaced and brought to new areas. That's a good way to uh, confuse people and to obscure history of a region. Looking very tired, this uh, wagon, horse and wagon. Not looking like a people that built this structure here. Very, very worn. Cobbles in the streets. Possibly um, heat damaged bricks starting to look like uh, cobbles. We're seeing it digging out here. You can see the rail lines as well. Pretty amazing looking structures, aren't they? Very elaborate, ornate. I know Russia had its own, uh, we we're told it has had its own uh, enlightenment or renaissance, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, a mirroring of what went on in the in the West. So again, a, a parallel timeline, I think, that has been manufactured for the people. On to Sevastopol. So from Saratov down to Sevastopol on the Black Sea. Um, heavily fought over in our modern day. Seaport. but also having that very similar architecture. A real, a real gem of the old world now, St. Petersburg, Russia, formerly Petrograd. And we move up to here, St. Petersburg. And horse and wagon people entering the city. There's, there are photos from the uh, mid-1800s of uh, St. Petersburg with nobody in the streets. A lot of researchers have uh, dug that one up, but they have uh, familiar looking old world structures. You know, if this was in the States, this would, would be a courthouse or a state capital. But in Russia, it's a palace, and this is the interior of that palace. Very, very elaborate, spectacular looking building. This is the fountain I, I spoke about, looking similar to the one in Omsk, the way these come off of there. Unique looking. Very interesting. And of course you have the horses pulling the streetcars, because apparently that's the narrative. What a strange technology we're to believe that these were all constructed on tracks to be pulled by horses and then magically um, electric electricity was made available and uh, they converted the technology and didn't need the horses anymore. We're looking at more of that same cathedral. Really amazing. Familiar looking. Very familiar looking. Uh, this is a perfect uh, juxtaposition of the old world structures and the horse and wagon culture of the uh, inheritors. The Winter Palace. Absolutely spectacular infrastructure along the banks of the water. Supposedly built on a swamp, this building, uh, this uh, city, St. Petersburg. The Winter Palace, here it is in the modern day. Looking like it hasn't aged what whatsoever. Some of the interior for you. Just drink it in. Certainly nothing that we could duplicate in the modern day. This is interesting. 
also looking like, uh, I don't even know what you call that. Bits and pieces of, I'm not even sure, L laid in epoxy. What do you think that's made of? Spectacular. And of course, everything decorated elaborately. Ceilings, arches. Amazing. Old world, folks. This is a, this is a previous civilization. This 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 culture. These people that you see down here were not building these structures. They inherited them. We haven't been building these at all. These people didn't build this bridge or any of these structures back here. This is all built and built out, as you can see, everything perfectly laid out. I did, these people didn't even build these streetcars. Again, these are part of the old, uh, old world infrastructure. Fantastic looking sweep to the stairs there. old world. There it is in the modern day. We celebrate these things as uh, the creations of uh, the royal bloodlines or the churches. And we know, we, we know now in the modern day that they just stole this. They stole this stuff. There's the one we looked at earlier. Cathedral of Kazan. This is an interesting photo as well. Let's get a little closer Faces are drawn in, aren't they? Strange. Here too. Is that a mustache? <laughs> Look at the building in the background. Wow. What are these? Spectacular. There's no end to it in St. Petersburg. They just had to have horses and statues. Who does this? What's the What's the reason? We really think that the, uh, <laughs> the history, as we've been told, is uh, on the up and up. And they're building this kind of stuff at a time when they were they were moving around with these. Come on, Saint Petersburg. I have to book a ticket to this place. And let's not forget the interiors and the chandeliers, the ornate chandeliers. Of course, they would have they made these and they probably made them for gas, right? Because we're being gaslit at the time. Well, yeah, we are being gaslit, absolutely. The level of detail is beyond comprehension. All right, we come to some of the the two great cathedrals in Russia. Okay, so this is the Church of the Savior on Blood. I call it a very strange name. Um, here it is in the modern day. It's, this is a mind blower, really. Let's get this is a better photo. Let's take a closer look. It's all red brick with all this elaborate ornamentation. They're telling us this was built between 1883 to 1907, which I say is a lie. There's no way that they were able to build a structure like this at that period of time um, with everything else that was going on and everything we are told about history. It's absolutely comical. This is the interior of this. Uh, again, let me tell, tell you the name. It is the Church of the Savior on Blood. Strange name. Now, these are, these are fantastic, and they would be absolutely amazing if they were paintings. They're not paintings. All of this is mosaic tile. All of this is mosaic tile. Yeah. It's really easy to get confused between this one and the one in Moscow. This is St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. You can see the amazing how amazing the uh, red bricks are, and uh, according to the narrative, you'd think this is probably built right in and around that same time period. But no, this is built in the 1500s, built from 1555 to 1561. We're told. And now there's all sorts of additions and changes and everything through time, which I think is an absolute hogwash. 
uh, another place I need to book a ticket to go see. Pretty spectacular. St. Basil's Cathedral. And of course these guys are taking a break from their construction day where they're up here working on the domes of St. Basil's Cathedral. Right. The horses needed a little bit of water. At least we we have a trough for the horses. This might be the one of the first pit photos I've seen that has a trough for the horses. <laughs> okay, we're moving to the end of the file here. We've only got a few photos left. This is Volgograd. And you can see it here, Volgograd, Saratov, Sevastopol. Looking absolutely devastated. But you can see before it was devastated, it had, of course, the same thing. The very wide streets, the pavers, and spectacular architecture. So what a realm. What a realm. And what a region of the realm. A region once known as Tartaria. But uh, spectacular old world Russia. And I leave you with a video I recently discovered on the Whisper Jack YouTube channel, link in the description. The uh, man is a talented everything, he's an artist, a musician, um, very insightful um, individual, and I certainly recommend his work here on YouTube. I too am in love with the old world. I like you to know the world I haven't forgotten the old you And I'm not so certain Things are better now They only tell us the truth And I've never forgotten The visions of old that I see In those photographs And do these surveys No, I won't let it go I'm resurrecting your memory Focusing on you, I'll offer it free.